everyone welcome back to the channel where you are watching our cloud school where we are discussing various data integration scenarios and how do we resolve those scenarios with the help of azure data with the help of azure data factory as a data integration service today in this video we will discuss how do we insert a record into a sql table from adls gen2 storage account file so in our adls gen2 we would have a csv file as an example and from that csv we want to insert into a sql server table using the azure data factory that is what we are going to see in this demonstration so let me just go back to let me open the azure portal for the demonstration so here in the azure portal we have the adls gen2 type of storage account which contains a container named as an input container inside the input container we have a sample file organization dash 100 csv it contains the 100 records for these organizations different organization and which we would like to insert into a sql server table so this is the data we have it right now and for sql server demonstration we have this sql server right now which contains which is of the azure sql server so this is a past instance of sql server database created in azure now here what we want to do is we want to dynamically create the organization table based on the data which we have in the csv in your case it may possible you already have the table pre-populated or already created existing table you want to insert it in both the cases our demonstration will work fine so let's say if you have a customer table which is already exists and you want to insert into this particular table our demonstration will work in that as well but without wasting time on creating the table of which of sql server table which is out of the scope of this demo i'll be creating the table on the fly from the azure data factory i'll be using this azure data factory instance for the demonstration that is where i'm going to define my pipeline which can copy the file from adls gen 2 to the azure sql server table to define the pipeline i'll click on this author and then from here i'll click on this plus icon pipeline pipeline that will define a new pipeline i'll be using a data factory or copy data activity but though you can also use the data flow but just for the simple demonstration i'll be using this copy data flow next i'm going to define the data set so for defining the data set we do not have any gen 2 data set as of now created so i'll be creating a new gen 2 type of data set so this is the option we need to select select this azure data like store account gen 2 and then file type in this case file format i'll be using the delimited text because we are expecting a csv file to be provided i'm going to call it as in source ds source next we are going to use the adls gen 2 link service so we already have a link service which we have created in our previous demonstration which can connect to the gen2 storage account so i'm going to use that link service using this link service with this data source I, if i click on the browse it will be able to connect to the storage account container and this is the container where we have our file so if i click on this container we'll see that this is the file we are looking for so as we are looking for only just a single file so i'm going to select this particular file in case if you're looking for a data to be arrived from multiple files then you may not want to select this file okay click on okay and that will define your gen2 storage account next i'm going to define the sync data set so let's click on this sync data set and that is where we would like to transform your data to which is a sql server as of now we do not have any data set which is of type sql server so i'll be creating a new data set which is of type sql server let's click on plus and here from this option i need to choose the azure sql database and that is what the data set we would like to use let's call it as an ds sql and the link service we are going to use the ls link service which is the link service already been available we have created in our past demonstration but if you would like to create a link service then you can create the link service using the standard sql server authentication option which we can anyways create at the moment if you look at it will give you the list of table which the sql server already contains so if your link service already contains a table which you would 
if your SQL Server already contains a table which you would like to use, you can select the, that particular table name from the top down. If not, then you can leave this option as is. So let me just click on OK because we would dynamic. We want the dynamically created table. So the data set is going to be as is. Now with that, our copy data activity is configured successfully from the source and the destination point of view. And if I just expand our data set which we have recently created, so this is our SQL data set which we have recently created. At the moment here, the table name is missing which is a mandatory. And to prove the point, if I click on validate action, I should have an error. It says the table name is required for the copy data activity, which means that in my data set, we have to provide the table name. To create a table name, what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide a parameter or I'm going to set a parameters to the SQL Server data set. So let's add a new parameter name and I'm going to call it as a table name and default value. We are not going to give it any default value. Data type is going to be string type because our table name is going to be a string type. Now, as soon as I click on the pipeline back again, and if I go back to the sync, you would see that that data set contains the parameter which you need to provide. So let's provide the parameter name or organization is the name of the table we want to give while creating the option of the table. Now we have defined the parameter, we have passed the value of the parameter from the data sync, but we are not using this parameter. So to use this parameter, I'll go back to the data set connections tab. And here in the edit section, I'll specify the name of the schema, which in which the table needs to be created. You can see that a small dot here, and then you have to specify the name of the table, which will be using it from the parameter. So I'm, I'm going to click on this dynamic content option, and that will have the parameters option to be selected which i want to use it as a table name so i'm going to select this table name as a parameter and you would see that the dynamic dynamically it has added a code at the red data set opening bracket closing bracket dot table name and table name will be arrived from here with that our table name has been successfully provided with the help of parameter and this parameter values we are passing from the copy activity now if i try and validate our pipeline it should be validated successfully as you can see right now, we are ready with copying the data from the source location, which is our organization's data. We can preview the data from this source data set. Our data will be available as in preview. Next, we have the sync data set, which we are using the SQL Server of the data set, which where we are providing the name of the table as in our organization. It could be anything. Now, let's focus on the right behavior in the right behavior there are three options insert update and store procedure which means that if i am going to use the insert for the very first time it will insert it but if i rerun again and again the same pipeline it might fail if your pipeline or if your table has a particular column as a primary key because if you try and insert a duplicate record in that primary key your table will fail but if you are dynamically generating the table, the drawback of dynamically generating the table is your SQL Server or your pipeline will generate a table in the SQL Server without primary key, which means that it will allow inserting the same record again and again, even 100 times, you would have the 100 time duplicated record created because your table which you are dynamically creating may not have the primary key, which means that it will allow the duplicate record. But in actual scenario, it may possible that this organization table might have a primary key. Let's go back to our preview data and we'll find that index, let's say index could be a primary key in, in our case. So it may possible that your actual table might have indexes in primary key. If that is the case, then insert option, right? Insert behavior is not going to be the correct option to use. In that case, it may possible you may want to use the upsert in that. Right. So what upsert will do is it will use the temporary database. So first your data will be copied to temporary table, temporary database. And then from there, it will use the update operation to the actual table. If the record is already exists, it will update it. If there are any updates to be performed, if not, then it will simply insert the record, right? This is the most appropriate behavior. It may possible. You may want to use it in your case. So make sure that you, you are choosing a right. Uh, correct behavior for the right behavior right correct option for the right behavior next you have the key column in case if you would like to perform the upsert operation you have to specify 
on which column basis you would like to uniquely identify whether a particular record needs to be inserted or needs to be updated which means that when as and when i am going to select the offset option if i am going to click on validate it will give me an error that you have to specify the key column so as in when you are using the offset column you have to specify you want to perform the offset but on which column basis you would like to perform the offset so let's say i would say that in in my case i want to perform the offset based on the index i'm not able to select the index column the reason for that is this offset option only works on the existing table not on the new table right so if you are using existing table it may possible you want to select index column as an offset column or maybe you can also select the combination of multiple columns as in primary key so you can combine let's say index and the organization id for an example as in primary key so your combination of these two column values is going to be used for the offset value right like i mentioned this offset will only work on the existing schema if, if you are using an existing table schema i'll show you a demonstration how do i do that so before that as we do not have the table right now i do not have option to use the offset column so i'm going to use insert so that it creates the table and later on we'll modify and use the existing table which it has created to write the or to show the demonstration of the offset as well so let me just run it validate the pipeline with the insert and then debug the pipeline instance so it will run a new instance on a debug mode and that will perform the actual activity of basically copying the data from organization and then inserting it to a sql server by that it will create the table in the sql server as well so my pipeline run has failed the reason for that is because it was not uh, the option to create auto table uh, create auto create the table name so that was the option i should have selected so let me just select the option create auto auto create the table name and then i'll run the pipeline again let's just run it up so that it creates the table name automatically so this time pipeline is successfully completed if i show you the sql server table let me just refresh it i should have the new table organization as we can see here the data is available let me just view the data here and while the data is loading i'll show you the number of column and the column type most of them would be of type and where care and you would see that there are no primary keys available like i mentioned if it automatically creates the table it will not have any organization table right now it has got the 100 records in the table right total record count is 100 100 rows are affected now if i run the pipeline again so if i run the pipeline again what will happen is it will add another 100 record in the same table because of unavailability to the existing or uh, to, to the primary key right while it is running the pipeline what i'll do is i'll show you next demo uh, where we are going to use the existing table name so or the existing schema for, for example so let me just use the option as an existing table schema and here we are going to specify the column name again it is not able to load it the reason for that is let me just go and open the table name and from here we are going to use not use this option i'm going to specify the table name by refreshing it because the organization table is already been created so if i refresh now i should have the organization table information already available as you can see and now from here the schema is going to be available so let me just say call uh, import schema so that i can import the schema name right and then if i just move it back to the information what we i have it already and then I am going to use the table name as you can see that this is the schema we already have and then table name again we are pre-populating it but as we have the schema name now if i'm going to just refresh this absurd option i would see that the column which we are looking for to absurd it basically it requires a schema in your data set to make sure that you are using the correct key columns in the absurd right if i'm going to validate again you would see that your pipeline has the data which you require now in this case what is going to happen is uh, it will upsort the record which means it will automatically update the records which are already present so for that our we i need to clean up the data our second pipeline is successfully completed and if i rerun the record again you would see that the total number of 
affected record is going to be 200. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to truncate the table. And this is the query I want to run so that it cleans the table record. And if I run the query again, it will say that there are no records to found, which means that if I'm now going to run the pipeline, I should have a new record only 100 records to be created even though if I run the pipeline two times you it will still have the 100 records available in the pipeline so our pipeline is successfully completed which means that it should have created 100 records in the table so let me just open the table again I'll run the query and you would find that it has created 100 account now if I run the pipeline again so it should not create another 100 record which it did in the last time because this time we are using the absurd column and to perform the absurd we are using the absurd based, based on the index and we have got the index which is a unique index so it is going to be simply just update the record. Yeah our pipeline is again completed successfully it has updated 100 records or inserted 100 records let's validate what it has done so if i run the query again you would see that it has found only 100 records which means that all the records are just simply updated not think nothing has been uh, updated nothing has been inserted it's just updates happened right so that is it in this demonstration so simply we have learned how to use the adls gen 2 file which is a csv file to insert a record into a SQL Server table using Azure Data Factory Pipeline. I hope you have found this useful. If it is, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching it. See you in the next video.